WROI Giant FM. Good morning. It is 1027, sitting at 81 degrees under a and hazy looking sky. Joined across the board by a true radio professional and a true professional in general, it's Woodlawn CEO John Alley. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm not sure I can live up to all that uh, here this morning. <laughs> well, I've heard the stories. You're great. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> and if I keep telling them enough, people will start believing it is, is my philosophy on that. So Yes. Had our board meeting yesterday, so kind of before we get into the board meeting, just the same old, same old, you know, where we're at with the COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, it's still a major issue here in our area. Still having new cases every day. Uh, they have slowed down a little bit. I think we had two or three new cases, you know, over the past couple of days, which was much better than the five and six and seven we were having per day. So we're seeing, you know, a, a little bit of flattening of that. Statewide, they're still seeing anywhere from 600 to 900 per day. So, you know, it's here. It's not going away. So reminder about the mask. You know, everybody's so tired of hearing masks. <laughs> and I know that. But what you have to realize... Again, the mask is not to protect you. It, I can guarantee you, unless you're wearing what's called an N95 mask, it will not protect you from getting it. What we want people to wear the mask for is to protect you from giving it to somebody else. We're still seeing approximately 40% of the population have no symptoms, none whatsoever. They get to the test, and they test positive. So what that does by wearing that mask, that prevents you from spreading that. It's, the virus is spread every time you exhale. You know, it's minute, microscopic droplets that's in your breath. You know, so please wear your mask, cover your nose and your mouth. We see a lot of folks just having their mouth covered. Well, you breathe in and out of your nose. So every time you exhale, if you would be that one in that 40%, you're spreading that to everybody around you. What the mask does is kind of traps that. So it doesn't spread as far. You know, the, the COVID will still go through the mask, but it won't go out that 6, 10, 12, 13 feet. It'll just go out maybe a few inches. So, again, the mask is not to protect you. It's to protect everybody else around you. So, please, I know they're a pain in the neck. Uh, hot weather, they're even they're more miserable. And, uh, you know, you, you're, they're hot. You get sweaty underneath there. But if, if you're out, just wear your mask. It's the right thing to do. It protects everybody else around you. We'll get through this. You know, we're seeing some promises now in new vaccines coming out. A lot of companies have got those in the final stages of testing. So we're hoping by the end of this year, first of next year, there will be an effective vaccine come out for this. And, again, a lot of people say, oh, I'm not going to get the vaccine. Well, that's how we stop this. You know, the vaccines do work. Uh, the other, I guess, promising news on some of this, some of the latest studies have shown that the virus has mutated again. It is now not as deadly as it was before, so you'll have it, won't be as sick, but it's more contagious now than it was before. So there was a give and take. So it is still out there, still very contagious, but if you do get it, you know, chances are being hospitalized or, or very slim unless you have a lot of underlying other medical conditions then that will affect you but we're seeing folks that are getting it saying you know i feel pretty good i might have i'm a little tired or i got a little bit of a headache or they they're positive but they're not having that severe respiratory that we saw early on way back in march so protect yourselves protect those around you that's the best thing i can say right now make sure you wear your mask to protect other folks it's not going to protect you very much it will protect other folks and there's a lot of, uh, they went from just being the disposable mask, but now there's a lot of cool different designs that you can get on your mask, ex express yourself a little bit further with that mask. Yes, I've, and one of the things that has recently come out, the CDC, a lot of the masks have what's called respirator valves in them. And what it does, you know, it filters the air you come in, but when you exhale, it opens up. That defeats the purpose of the mask. So if you have one of those that's got the valve in it, so when you exhale, you know, you don't fog your glasses up, it's the same thing as wearing no mask at all, because what it does is allowing all your breath to come out, again, carrying that virus. If you're that 40% that tests positive for that, you're just spreading the virus. So we recommend you know, not to wear the, the mask with the valves on them. I see a lot of them out there, and early on, you know, everybody, they were saying, no, they're good. CDC has determined that it basically is almost like wearing no mask at all, because that valve, again, allows pretty about 90% of your exhale to escape out that mask. So oh, wow. just keep that in mind. If you have one with a valve on it, you know, I would suggest maybe switching to something else. Just the uh, paper surgical mask is actually better than the mask with the valves on it as far as protecting people around you. 
kind of get into now where we got to the board meeting. Yeah. Uh, we got that going yesterday. One of the things I wanted to share with everybody, for several years we've been working in with uh, cooperation with two of the hospitals in Fort Wayne, both Parkview and Lutheran, on stroke care. So one of the things that we wanted to do to bring to this community was up our game in stroke care. So we are now getting certified, which is called it will be a stroke ready hospital. What that means is we've got plans in place and procedures in place that once we've identified a stroke patient has come to our facility, we can expedite getting them the treatment they need at our facility and get them transferred to either Parkview or Lutheran. And we kicked that off about uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, we're in our, you know, basically open period now. An outside agency will come in. It's one of the accrediting agencies sponsored by Medicare. And they'll review our plan and what we've done and uh, to give us our certification so that we can say we are stroke ready. Uh, unfortunately, in the past uh, you know few days, we've had three strokes come into the hospital. And I think what we want to do is just educate folks on that. Years and years ago, the acronym was FAST. Now they've added a little bit to that, and now they say if you suspect a stroke, be FAST. B stands for balance. If you have loss of balance, an indication you might be suffering a stroke. Vision loss, you know, in one eye or vision loss change. That's the, you know, eyes. B-E, so E is the eyes. If you have some vision changes. Your face, a drooping smile. You try to smile and one side goes up, the other side doesn't. Uh, Arm, one arm is weak. And one of the tests we like to do there is hold both arms out in front of you. And if one arm starts drifting and you can't keep it up, again, that might be another subtle sign that you've had a stroke. Slurred speech, not alcohol induced, but you know, slurred speech. Uh, you know, again, that's another sign. And the last one is time. You know, time is is valuable. If you have experienced a stroke, the faster you can get in, get that diagnosed, and we can get you to that treatment center. We've seen a lot of people have complete recoveries from their strokes if they get there in time. So if you think you're having a stroke, absolutely call nine one one. Get an ambulance there. We've worked with all the EMS providers in our area. They know the protocols. They're working in conjunction with us. They can actually start treatment at the scene, not wait till you get to the hospital. So, again, time is money when it comes to when you're, if you've got a, a stroke going on. We want to save that brain as much as we can. The faster we can get that, that uh, medical attention to you, the higher probability that you'll re- recover without any deficits from it. And what we see a lot of folks say, well, yeah, I, I didn't feel good last night, but I just went to bed. Well, now all of a sudden it's 24 hours later. Now they got some deficits, and, and we can't help them. You know, they, they've wasted that time. So again, if you're any suspect at all of a stroke, call nine one one. It's much better to be wrong and get the you know looked at than that. Ah, I'm going to just blow this off, not go worry about it. And all of a sudden, either you have a serious stroke, you know, death from it. You can die from strokes, or some serious, uh, you know. A inability to perform, you know, like lose the use of a limb or, or stuff like that. So we really want to push this more and more education. Be aware of the signs of stroke. Now, you were saying uh, you've had three in the last couple of days. Yes. Has the heat played a factor in that with it spiking up real fast? We, out of we can't put nowhere? any, you know, thing, you know, seasonal or heat. We just don't know. And I, I'm, what I'm thinking is that since we have now really upped the awareness of that with local EMS and everybody, we might have been having some strokes before that weren't being recognized as soon. Now, you know, we bring these patients in. We have a direct connect with a neurologist in Fort Wayne via a computer screen. It's a two ways, kind of like a Zoom meeting. So they're actually looking at that patient. They're working with our doctors. They're working with the EMS, and they're evaluating that patient in real time. So we've saved that 45-minute drive now to Fort Wayne. We've got that neurologist immediately looking and I think that's making a difference. Everybody's now so aware that here's the signs we want to look for. And, uh, you know, we've had folks, I'm guessing in the past, that's had a little mini strokes and just didn't know it because we just weren't in tuned to exactly some of the nuances that's happening with the strokes now. So, okay. we're, you know, the EMS has been working great with us. Uh, we're getting, uh, you know, the rhythm strips, EK. In the field, before they even get to the hospital, they're transmitting that to us. We've got all the demographics for that patient because, like anything in healthcare now, if we don't have your name and birth date and, you know, the five kids that you have, we can't get you in our system. Everybody has to be paper-driven. You have to be registered. We're getting that done before you ever hit the hospital. So when you hit that back door, we're immediately taking you for a CT scan. It's done immediately. There's no delay. 
that's then immediately available to the neurologist. We get him on the you know the Zoom meeting with us and the patient. It's just a it's a thing of beauty to watch when it all comes together. When you have all these people in conjunction instead of being fragmented, now we're working as one unit. It makes a tremendous difference for the outcome of the patient. So, you know, again, if you suspect that you or a loved one is having a stroke, please, please, please call nine one one. Time is of the essence in getting these treated early so we can make a full recovery. So we kind of got through that a little bit, the presentation, and we're hoping to have, again, have that certification here in the next two to three months, waiting on the surveyors to come in, and COVID is kind of slowing that down a little bit. But, uh, you know, we're ready, and uh, I think we're going to do very well when they come in for the survey. I think we're ready for that. The other thing we had yesterday for years, for I think it's 11 years now, we've been a, a sponsor of the Compassionate Health Clinic here in town. Yes. And uh, so each year, Mary Kay, who's now the executive director, comes in and kind of gives the board an update, you know, what's happening. And again, we fund, we help fund that each year. We like to hear from the folks, what have you done? How many patients have you seen? And they're actually seeing more patients now than they have because of the COVID. A lot of folks are out of work. When you're out of work, you lose your insurance. So that's that, you know, kind of a stopgap for folks. They can go there. Once you get enrolled and you qualify that service, you get free health care. It costs you nothing. So the hospital helps with that. So yesterday the, the board did go ahead and approve one more year of assisting them. We give $75,000 a year, you know, to those, to the, the clinic. Over the, the years, these 11 years, what we've seen is, a marked decrease in the number of folks coming to our facility from that population that are suffering either a diabetic issue or heart issues. They're getting early intervention. Before, they just kept waiting and waiting until it got so bad they would come in by ambulance. So it is a definite benefit for the for the community, and the hospital sees that too because now when we do see one of their patients, you know, they're really sick. But we're not seeing the heart issues and the diabetics like we did before because they're getting early intervention there. They're getting the meds they need. And so it's making those folks a little more aware of the situation so they're taking better care of themselves. So it's it's very important that we keep that in this community for those folks that you know do not have that health insurance. It gives them a spot to go so they can get you know, the care they need in a timely manner. And then we had a presentation uh, from our director of surgical services. Uh, Some of the scopes that we use there are at the end of the lease, so they're five years old. There's such new technology from five years ago, and that doesn't seem that long, but I guess when you start looking at, when you're looking at surgical instruments, that's a lifetime. So, you know, we did uh, have a presentation by her to upgrade our current system so the physicians can get a much better view of the anatomy when they're using the scopes. And these are going to be used by uh, the orthopedic surgeons and, uh, you know, if you have some gastric issues where some of the general surgeons will use this. And it's just a little small incision they make. They put the the camera in there and they can look around. So we've upgraded that technology and hopefully have that in place within the next two to three weeks. You know, once the purchase order goes in, we can get that uh, going with that company. We finally got down to the financials, and uh, again, I take these with a grain of salt. Uh, We're still getting uh, federal dollars in. We still don't know what they're to be used for. Um, You know, just last week or a week or so ago, we got a check for $690,000. It was just not a check, deposited in our account. We don't know what it is. It It said federal grant monies. There's restrictions with it. We're trying to find out what those are. And we keep getting, well, it's going to be another 120 to 180 days before we can tell you what you can use that money for. <laughs> so it's really distorted our financials. So when we look at our, our patient revenue, uh, we did about $12.8 million in gross revenue. We wrote off about $8.4 million. So then we get into this, what's called our other operating revenue. That's some of this grant money that comes in. We got $1.7 million there. Operating expenses was uh, right at $5 million, so that gives us a fairly nice operating income of $1.1 million. We had some non-operating revenue, which comes from the cafeteria and other non-direct patient care areas of $265,000. So we, we was able to show a $1.4 million profit for the month. Sounds really good. I don't know how much that I'm going <laughs> to give back at some point. Right. So we're keeping all that money that we've come in. Basically, we've deposited into you know, an interest-bearing account. Uh, 
if and when we have to get some of that back, at least we've put that money to use and got some interest on that. But it's just kind of you know aggravating with us right now. We'd love to use that money for you know infrastructure changes if we could. We just don't know what we can use that money for. So we're kind of sitting on it, and, and hopefully within the next month or so, we'll get some more guidance you know from the federal government. Here's what these monies can be used for. We have used part of it to offset losses that we experienced uh, in February, March, and April. Those were you know really bad months for us because we shut everything down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we just said we're not doing anything because of COVID. So, you know, we've off some of this is part of that money was still being brought into the system. But we still have, you know, a fairly large amount of cash out there. We've got it in a savings plan. My gut tells me we're probably going to be giving a lot of it back because, you know, we might not be needing it for how they say we have to use it, which is fine. I, we're not going to, you know, just waste that money. If we don't need it, we're going to send it back, let it go to somebody who might need it. But until we know what those guidelines are, we're just kind of setting on it. So the financials are a little bit distorted. We tried to, you know, peel back the onions, so, so to speak, on this month. And probably without, you know, some of that stimulus money, it's called, that we've got, we would probably had maybe a two to $300,000 operating profit. So we know it's distorted a little bit. It is going to be probably the first, you know, nine months of this year until we get through some of this. We're hoping by the time we hit year end, we kind of have a better idea what we can do with those funds, what we get to keep, and what has to go back. So, you know, they look really good now, but I'm, you know, that other shoe hasn't fallen yet, so we're yeah. still waiting for that to happen. And hopefully by the time we get around to year end, we'll have a much better handle on what did we actually do this year. Uh, we've been very busy the past couple months. I, it's kind of the rebound effect. Everybody had nothing going on for three months, yep. and they just they got to the point they got to get their medical, you know, uh, either surgeries or visits. They got to get them in. So we've seen a little bit of that rebound. And I'm thinking that's going to start leveling off into this month and hopefully get back to some sort of normal, if there is a normal anymore, <laughs> right. as we move through the rest of the year. So that was pretty well the board meeting. Okay, well, lots of things going on. Hey, we were busy yesterday, yes. More new equipment. I think every time we've talked in the last year, you guys have been getting some new equipment in there. Yeah, it's, you know, what we like to do there is we just don't buy new equipment just to be buying it. We want to make sure whatever we're spending our hard-earned dollars on is going to benefit the physicians and our patients. And the technology that's coming in with these new scopes is just phenomenal. Again, just in a short five years, the advancements that we're seeing in the technology as far as the cameras, uh, you know, there are now HD cameras, little tiny things, and the, the image that the physician can see as he's doing the surgery is just phenomenal. So it, it's, it's kind of nice, kind of like the robot. You know, when you look at it, you know, that was something six, seven years ago, if they said we're going to do robotic surgeries, I'd say, we're, yeah, we're not in Star Trek, but we are. We're starting right. to see some of that. So it's, it's kind of nice to look at some of the technology that's available and that we can bring to this community to serve our patients and our physicians. Yeah, well, uh, best of luck figuring out how you can use this grant money. Um, hopefully, by the time we talk next month, you're able to go, we finally figured it out, here's what it is. Yeah, we can start using part of this. So. We're not going to hold our breath on no, I, I'm, you No, know, we're dealing with the federal government here, so yeah. we know how things move. And, you know, I think right now, a lot of their concern is not so much this, it's more the election. Everybody's trying to get reelected. So I think all, all some of the rules and regs are kind of in a holding pattern, probably. I'm hoping after November, maybe we have a little more clear direction of what we can do with some of these funds. I sure hope so. I know uh, governor is due to go live this afternoon and discuss whether we stay in 4.5 or go to 5. I think we'll go to 4.6. Oh. I don't know if we'll go to 5. Uh, I think there's still enough new cases that we're seeing you know, every day. I would be hesitant to see him just say, okay, we're going to open everything back up. Uh, you know, when you look at the college campuses, you know, the massive outbreaks there, I think that's going to temper him a little bit. Uh, I don't know if we'll go to five, you know, to five zero yet or not. We might, maybe a four seven five somewhere in that area. <laughs> So, uh, yes, could be anxious to see what comes out this afternoon. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to it, and I know you guys are definitely looking yes. forward to it because it'll make a difference for you guys. It absolutely does. All right. Well, Mr. Alley, thank you very much for stopping by. My pleasure. Keep Enjoy up, coming down here. Yeah, keep up the good work, and uh, we'll let you do your radio thing again next month. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.